Hi there everyone, I'm at the Space Centre Houston with the Operations Manager, Anson, and he's going to show us a really cool space object. So I've got my gloves on already, thinking what little, what little space trinket are you going to pull out? Right. Look what he's got for us. <laughs> now just quickly, before you get too excited about the space shuttle, that's not, a, that's not an actual space shuttle, is it? That's a half fidelity mock-up or replica of the space shuttle. But it actually is exactly the same size and almost exactly the same weight as the actual space shuttles. It, look, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have known if right. you didn't tell me. It, it looks amazing. Right. But the thing we're interested in today and the thing we're going to get to go inside, which is amazing, is the thing underneath the space shuttle, in case you didn't notice it. This is the real thing. This is the NASA 747 shuttle carrier aircraft. This aircraft transported and ferried the shuttle from Edwards Air Force Base back to the Kennedy Space Center for launch uh, if they needed to land there. It also was the test vehicle when we started testing the shuttle's glide. So it dropped the shuttle, or actually go let the shuttle go, and the Enterprise would come back and, and land, and it was back just landing at the Edwards Air Force Base. So this 747 has like a played a crucial role in the history of the space shuttle. It's, it's been there and done it all. Yes, it has. It was crucial to get the shuttle back from the Edwards Air Force Base over on the other side of the United States, back to the east side of the United States for the Kennedy Space Center. Couldn't the space shuttle just fly home on its own? <laughs> no, the space shuttle has no jet engines. So basically, this 747 would give piggyback rides to the space shuttle back home after it landed on the other side of America. But enough of this, let's get let's inside. Let's go check eh? it out. All right, yeah. this is excellent. Let's go and have a look. All right, we're underneath it now. Have a look. There's the wheels. That's, that's already bigger than anything we've ever had on objectivity. This is soon going to be open to the public, I believe, but at the moment, it is getting it all ready. So at the moment, we're really lucky to get to go inside. This is the area that the wheels go up into. And so I'm loving it so much here. It's I'd huge. be happy if you just showed me this. You I can ride here. You yeah. can ride here. Yes, it's yeah. huge. Hang on, Justin. Excitement alert. I have seen a signature over there, which, has caught, six, which six. has caught my eye. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we have a Brady. This is what I love about America. Brady is not an uncommon name. <laughs> A lot of these are from the mechanics that came down here, helped us disassemble this aircraft at the airport that's four miles north of here. Disassemble it, bring it here down the roads, take down over 140 obstructions, get it here and put it back together. They put it back together in about two weeks. Wow. What was it like for you when you saw this thing being delivered? You saw this thing come on the back of a vehicle thinking, this is my new toy, <laughs> this is my new exhibit. What did you feel like? Uh, it's the coolest thing ever. It was the coolest thing ever. It still is. We're real excited and can't wait to open it to the public. Let's go inside. Yes. I have never <laughs> seen a 747 like this before. This actually gives you a really interesting perspective as to how big they are, doesn't it? Because normally yes, they're full does. of, you know, we see them full of seats and people and... Yes. Yes, this one, uh, of course, is completely gutted. All the seats, all the carpeting, all the baggage compartments, everything in the air conditioning, everything has been taken out for weight purposes. Some of the story behind this airplane. Uh, back in the 70s, uh, NASA was in the design phase of the space shuttle. We we're going to launch at Kennedy Space Center, east side of the United States, or we're going to land at the biggest runway we have, Edwards Air Force Base. But how are we going to get the shuttle back? How are we going to get it back from Edwards all the way over to the other side of the United States? A lot of thoughts were going around. And then one of the engineers here at Johnson Space Center came up with an idea. He designed, or his hobby was a remote control aircraft. He built a remote control 747 with a scale shuttle on back, flew it, it worked. Some of the leadership here found out about it, said, we got to see this. And so they got ready. We actually blocked off a runway at Ellington Field so he could fly his remote control 747. It flew, we've got something. Let's go buy some 747s. This actual 747 was originally uh, owned by American Airlines, and it did transport people uh, in transcontinental across the ocean flights until NASA procured it or bought it from American Air Airlines back in the 70s. NASA did need to transport some of the ground crew, the people to secure the shuttles, secure the plane on both ends, both at Edwards Air Force Base and at the Kennedy Space Center. Am I allowed to sit in one? Sure, sure. <laughs> I always like having a window seat, so I'm going to go for a window <laughs> yeah. seat. Do you have any idea if it f felt like a normal flight when the shuttle was attached? I believe so. I never got the chance to fly in it with the shuttle attached. But I think it was probably a very smooth flight. Uh, you know, they wanted to fly this thing very smoothly with the shuttle on top. You don't want it to come off. But There's quite a bit more room, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, it's nice. It's <laughs> nice. It's nice. They, these NASA people fly in style, don't they? Yeah. We're going upstairs. Now. Yeah. You know where I want to be. <laughs> I want to have a look up here. Yeah, let's go sit up here in the cockpit. All right. Have a seat in the captain's chair. Oh, no. 
Oh. Yeah. Look at this. This is almost the best bit. It says NASA 747 on the steering wheel. Like you could forget. You can see nowadays uh, a lot of these gauges would be replaced with CRT screens. You'd have maybe six screens and about more than half of the switches would be gone. What does sitting here feel like for you? Are you jaded by this? Am I just too excited or does this get you a little bit excited too? I've been in here maybe four or five times already. Every single time I'm just as excited as the first time. It's really amazing to see all these switches and to know it just wasn't that long ago that this plane was operational. It's not fueled up or anything, is it? No, and we don't touch that start button. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. There's a little secret that actually at the moment there aren't any engines on the plane. That will be changing soon, but at the moment there are no engines. So there is no danger <laughs> of me accidentally careering through the car park there and making a mess of everything. But because of that, can I play with these? Sure, sure. Look at that. We are go for takeoff. Well, can I just say, thank you so much for letting me come and sit here. <laughs> I thought I was excited when I was sitting down in business class. <laughs> yeah. This takes the cake. Thank you very much. It was thank really you. great. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm really curious about the back. It just looks interesting to me. Do you mind if I go and have a look? No, no yeah. not at all. It looks like the Large Hadron Collider. <laughs> So we're right down in the tail of the plane now, and we've got this, I don't know what this is about. There's some puffy substance. Mm-hmm, insulation, yeah. Insulation. Should we go down the front now? Let's go check it out. 